Dr. Cherry, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had a major oil spill, but now one is certainly in the news. Um, what will be the long-term effects, in your opinion, of the, uh, of the oil spill in the Gulf? Well, the long-term effects are highly dependent on the efforts to contain the oil spill. Uh, but what could happen is a massive kill-off of birds, fish, and other marine life on the Gulf Coast, followed by decades of slow recovery due to the destruction of their habitat and ingestion of toxic substances. Um, how does the Gulf Coast oil spill compare to the uh, Exxon Valdez incident? Well, the Exxon Valdez incident occurred on a rocky area in a remote area of Alaska. But the Gulf Coast is largely comprised of wetland, shipping channels, and densely populated areas. And uh, these areas rely on tourism and fishing for their livelihood. So the impact could be greater in the Gulf Coast than it was in Alaska. What are the potential human effects of uh, this particular disaster? Well, for most people who are exposed simply by standing on the beach where the oil was spilled, I don't expect much toxic effect from being near the oil. But the greater impact will be on the, the livelihood of the people who get their living from fishing and tourism. And when people lose their livelihood, they're more prone to all kinds of adverse health effects because of lack of health care and other resources. What did we learn during the Exxon Valdez oil spill uh, about the effects on human health arising from consumption of fish, arising from uh, the effects on the food chain? Well, certain types of seafood are more impacted than others. For instance, oysters, shrimp, and crab will be affected over the coming months and years from ingesting potentially toxic substances. But most fish will still be safe to eat. Are there any particular groups of people who are at greater risk uh, from the effects of this spill? Not in particular from the oil spill. Now, Pregnant women and young children are advised to avoid certain types of fish due to the mercury contamination, but we're not talking about mercury here. So certainly the fish on the market now is still safe to eat, and uh, the, the uh, Food and Drug Administration will uh, issue advisories if there are any health risks from the seafood, and you can uh, visit their website at uh, fda.gov. How long did it take uh, Alaska to return to some sort of environmental normalcy, some sort of stasis following the uh, Exxon Valdez inc incident, incident? Well, it, it took a few years to remove the, the oil from the surface of the water, but the oil is actually still contained in the sand of their beaches, and even though it's been about 25 years since that oil spill, they're still in recovery. Well, given the differences between, as you uh, referred to earlier, between the rock-lined uh, Prince William Sound uh, area of the uh, Exxon Valdez spill and the marshy coastal grasses uh, Gulf Coast, what's your educated best guess on how long it will take to recover from this oil spill? I think it will take decades. You know, it took decades in Alaska and uh, in the Gulf Coast we have this marshy area that could absorb the oil like a sponge. Now there's some advantages because of the occurring in warmer water and the type of oil, it's sweeter and more biodegradable than the oil that was spilled in Alaska. So that could be an advantage where it would uh, dissipate more quickly, but it's still likely to take decades to recover. Is there any benefit from the fact that it is marshy? Will there be filtration that didn't take place uh, on the rocky shores of Prince, Prince William Sound? Uh, there could be an advantage in that it might be more biodegradable. I mean, the bacteria in the warmer water uh, may help it biodegrade faster instead of just sitting there in, in sand residues like it has in Alaska. Very well. Thank you very much, Doctor. Mm -hmm.